On November 13th of 2005, a young man stole his parents' car, picked up his girlfriend, and got into a high-speed police chase before crashing into a tree in Indiana. But as for what he was running from, well, that was the worst part of all. This is the case of David Ludwig. Hello, friend, and welcome to High Time Crime. My name's Joel, and on here I specialize in true crime and also doing an impressively bad British accent. Hello, governor. Would you like a cup of tea? But anyways, today we're going over the case of David Ludwig, a wannabe Romeo to his girlfriend's Juliet. You're going to learn about how people who act like they're good can still do terrible things to others. And by the way, I did change a few of the names in this case for privacy reasons. For our story, we're heading to a place known as Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Lidditz is a borough in Lancaster County with a small population of around 9,500 people. Having been in the area many times myself, I can tell you that much of it is rural and picturesque. And when you take a drive through it in your car, you're going to get frequent whiffs of manure and grass from the surrounding farmland. You also might see some Amish people riding around in their buggies. Overall, it's a pretty cool place. But with that being said, if you ever find yourself here, there's a handful of fun things to do. You can take a trip to the Lidditz Springs Park and check out the beautiful fountains and live concerts. You could head over to the Wilbur Chocolate Retail Store filled with all the chocolate you could ever want. You could visit the Wolf Sanctuary PA, a wildlife refuge featuring one of the most interesting and mysterious animals around, a wolf. You could even stop by Julius Sturgis Pretzel Bakery where delicious twisted dough is the name of the game. But despite how joyful all of those activities sound, none of them are the reason as to why we're in Lidditz today. Mike and Kathy Borden were a 50-year-old couple who lived in a normal suburban neighborhood of Lidditz. Mike worked as the manager for a commercial printing company, while Kathy was a stay-at-home mom who looked after their three youngest kids. Overall, the couple had five children, three boys, and two girls. But by the mid-2000s, the older two boys had moved out, and now the only kids who still lived with their parents were the 15-year-old Catherine, her younger sister Kara, who was 14, and Daniel, the youngest brother, who was about 11. Kara and her siblings were homeschooled their entire lives and taught the Christian values that their parents believed in. Every Sunday, the entire family went to church, and Mike was a church elder who even taught Sunday school. According to others, Mike was a compassionate, hardworking man with a genuine belief in the values of his faith. Co-workers that knew him described him as being private but friendly. And he was born in Missouri, but still retained his southern twang after moving to Pennsylvania a decade before. Meanwhile, Mike's wonderful wife, Kathy, was his high school sweetheart and an extremely loving and dedicated mother and spouse. Nobody that the Bordens knew ever had anything but kind words to say about her. Overall, the Borden family gave off the impression of being a very loving and stable family. Kara and her sister, Catherine, were known for being bubbly and outgoing and just your typical girls. But unfortunately, now that Kara had entered her teenage years, trouble was brewing right around the corner. At some point in early 2005, Kara Borden became part of an after-school sports group where the kids of parents who homeschooled could hang out and make friends. And it was here that Kara was introduced to a young man by the name of David Ludwig. David Gregory Ludwig was born on April 28th of 1987 in Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Just like Kara, he was raised in a devoutly religious household and homeschooled by his parents. 
Friends and acquaintances described David as being a seemingly normal and outgoing young man. He loved soccer, movies, and music. And he was actively involved in the local Lidditz Christian Church and had made a fair share of loyal and dedicated friends there. He also had a job at Circuit City, and according to a co-worker, he brought his Bible there every day and read it frequently. However, at a certain point in his teenage years, David's focus became split between religion and mingling with girls. When Kara Borden and David met in early 2005, Kara was 14 and David was 18. And despite the fact that they hit it off right away, it was only a matter of time before the age difference became a problem, especially considering the conservative nature of Kara's parents. But like most relationships, Kara and David started out as a friendship and it went further from there. And by the time the two of them were officially boyfriend and girlfriend, no one, not even their closest friends, realized that they were dating. It wasn't until sometime in the spring of 2005, when Lidditch Church held a recreational get-together, that people finally realized. And the way that played out was something like this. So with live music playing in the background and the sound of chatter all around her, Kara Borden wound up in an intense argument with a boy she knew in the parking lot. It's not clear what this disagreement was about, but before long it ended and she went back inside the recreational center. After that, David talked to some of the people at the party about how concerned he was for Kara. So he pulled her aside and spoke to her for several minutes alone. And apparently, that was enough for people to start thinking that there was more to their quote-unquote friendship than they let on. But despite the fact that people were realizing that Kara and David were dating, practically nobody approved of their relationship. Now, one of David's best friends was a boy who we'll call Simon. According to Simon's father, who had known David for a long time, Kara wasn't allowed at his home because he thought she was trouble. Not only was she much younger, but she dressed and wore makeup in a way that made it look like she was older and her parents were never around. And so these factors made Simon's father suspicious of Kara, and he told Simon to start hanging out with David more to get a sense of what's going on. But pretty soon, Simon's friendship with David started to take a hit because he learned that David was sneaking out late at night to hang out with Kara. Evidently, Simon had the same suspicions about Kara and David's relationship that his father did. And over the period of the next few months, David repeatedly lied to Simon, telling him that he and Kara had broken up. But then Simon would catch the two together at public places, and David would get caught in these lies. But more importantly than David's friends, Kara's parents soon became worried about her relationship with David. In fact, the moment that they even realized it was happening, they wanted it to end. According to David, he had met Kara's parents on a few occasions, but never gained their approval because of the age difference. And so ultimately, this tension between David, Kara, and her parents ended up culminating in a terrible atrocity, something that was far more evil than anyone could have expected. On November 11th of 2005, David and a few of his friends were hanging out at a nearby school when he made a remark saying that he believed that he could quote unquote kill someone and get away with it. Now at the time, few thought much of this, but two days later, it became quite prophetic. During the early morning hours of November 13th, Kara Borden was in the middle of sneaking back into her house after spending the entire night out with David. She had tiptoed onto her parents' front porch, 
opened up the window and climbed through it, and now she was ready to head up the stairs and go to her room. But blocking her path on the stairway was none other than her mother, Kathy. Now, despite the fact that Kara was immediately stunned, she managed to shout, Mother, you scared me. Then, with her arms folded and a stern look, Kathy asked her daughter, Where were you, young lady? To which Kara replied that she was out meeting with a girlfriend who desperately needed to talk to her. But after that, her father, Mike, came down, still wearing his nightly robes. And together, the parents interrogated their daughter more thoroughly, until her story had so many cracks in it that they were going to have to call a plumber. Then, all of a sudden, Kara received a loud text message on her phone, and she flipped it open to see who it was from. And within just a few seconds, Mike snatched the phone from his daughter's hand before she could even respond. So it is that Ludwig boy, he said. Now at this point, the cat was finally out of the bag. So Kara responded defiantly, we're in love and we're going to get married. Like hell you will, Mike shouted back at her. And then the next few hours were spent trying to get David to come over the house in order for Kara's parents to have a little chat with him. But although David eventually agreed, he viewed the entire ordeal as a life or death situation. Suddenly, he realized that Kara's parents could either have him arrested or simply stop him from ever seeing her again, both outcomes of which were unbearable for him. So before David left his parents' house, he stocked up on guns and ammunition, borrowed his father's red 1998 Volkswagen Jetta, and placed all the equipment he needed in the passenger's seat. Next, he drove to Kara's parents' house, which was only about five minutes away. And when he arrived, he parked a couple of doors down from the Borden's house. That way, they wouldn't be able to see that he was carrying any weapons with him. But after this, David got out of the vehicle, lifted up his shirt, and placed a Glock 17 in his waistband. And then he took the other firearms he brought and rolled them up in a towel before placing the entire package under his right arm. Next, David walked around to the back door of Kara's parents' house and knocked several times. And the person who greeted him at the door was Kara's father, Mike. Right away, Mike noticed David was holding this weird package, and so he said, you can leave that on the front porch. To which David complied by lowering the bundle and placing it on the ground. After that, Mike motioned for David to come inside, and for the next 40 minutes, the two of them, along with Kara's mother, sat on the couch opposite of each other and had a long discussion. Mike told David that what he and Kara were doing was wrong and that he needed to seize all contact with her or he would be arrested. But David did not take this news well. So after about 45 minutes, when Mike got up, he said the discussion was over and headed for the door to see David out. David then whipped out a Glock 17 from his waistband and fired it at the back of Mike's head, killing him instantly. After that, Kara's mother, Kathy, began to stand up from the recliner chair she was sitting on, but as she did this, David turned left to face her and then shot and killed her too. Afterwards, he went around the inside of the home looking for Kara but couldn't find her, so he then went out the back door and searched the backyard. And while he was looking, he heard Kara's younger brother, Daniel, break the screen window upstairs trying to escape. So David yelled up to Daniel that he wasn't going to hurt him and that he should just go to the neighbor's house. Next, David got back into his father's car and continued searching for Kara. But before long, he found her and she ran up to his car jumped into the passenger seat and said, I'm so thankful to see you. And at this point, it became an extremely twisted and dark love story. Now that Kara's parents were dead, 
David and Kara were going to run away as far as they could and live happily ever after. Except that's not what ended up happening at all. Instead, they drove in the getaway vehicle to a couple places before ultimately being involved in a high-speed car chase. The first place that they went to was an ATM to withdraw $300 from David's bank account. Then they stopped by a gas station to fill up their tank. And sometime after that, they went to a store and bought clothes. But by the time an entire day had passed, they had made it all the way to Belleville, Indiana, and were now being chased by the police. There was also a nationwide Amber Alert for Kara Borden, with David being the fugitive suspected of taking her hostage. And every single minute of it was being televised on the local news. But as for what transpired during the chase, well, one of the officers involved was a 38-year-old officer by the name of Dave Cox. According to him, during the chase, he was able to run David's car off the road, and in the process, David and Kara wound up crashing into a tree at a rate of 40 miles per hour. Fortunately for them, they were fine because the airbags deployed, but after that, Cox and another officer went to the driver's side of the vehicle with their weapons drawn and pulled David out of the car. Evidently, he was a bit dazed because of the crash, so he didn't react very much at first. And Officer Cox was able to quickly jump on top of him and place handcuffs on his wrists. Meanwhile, Kara came running around from the passenger side and shouting, Don't hurt him. Please, don't hurt him. And right away, Officer Cox became skeptical that Kara was a hostage. So he and his partner ordered her to lay on the ground with her face down. And after a bit of hesitation, she did as she was told. Then, as they were placing handcuffs on her wrists, Kara asked if she and David had been on the news, to which the officer replied, You think? After that, police brought David and Kara into the station and interviewed them. During their interview with David Ludwig, they uncovered some interesting things. Apparently, about a month before this terrible atrocity, Kara had a pregnancy scare before realizing it was just a false alarm. Then, around the same time as that, they started planning to run away together. Their plan was officially supposed to take place a week after November 13th, while Kara's parents were away attending a wedding. But obviously, that never came to fruition because of David's actions. But on top of this information, there were even more dark secrets that they found when they gained access to David's computer and cell phone records. This included hundreds of flirtatious messages and inappropriate pictures exchanged between him and Kara over Instant Messenger, and a series of videos featuring David and a friend breaking into people's houses. Additionally, when police began to do even more digging, they discovered that Kara wasn't the first underage girl David had been associated with. Just a few months before him and Kara became a thing, there was yet another runaway girl who he took to his family's hunting cabin, the outcome of which was just her father picking her up after a neighbor reported the incident. So although strange and uneventful, it still goes to show that David had a tendency of engaging in this type of behavior. But anyway, when David Ludwig's trial finally took place in June of 2006, it was quick and conclusive. In the end, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Originally, he was accused of kidnapping, but those charges were dropped. As for what happened to Kara Borden and her family, well, her interview with police corroborated much of what David said in his, and pretty soon she was sent back home to her remaining family members. Then, less than a week after their parents' death, Kara and her siblings attended their parents' funeral. It was a sad affair, but the turnout was massive, with hundreds of people showing up. Practically, no mention was made of the tragedy. Instead, Mike and Kathy were shown respect for being faithful Christians and good people, 
And when it was over, Kara and her siblings found a new home living with their relatives in another state. So at the very least, they had a place to go. But naturally, it would be a long time before Kara was able to completely mend her relationship with everyone. But anyway guys, this was a bit of a confusing one. How a young man who was so actively involved in the church could just suddenly murder two people in cold blood is crazy. Obviously, there are people out there who behave in one way in public and another in private. And David Ludwig was very clearly one of those people. Despite the Bible saying no to premarital relations, he did just that. Despite the Bible saying not to kill people, he did just that. So all I have to say is what David did was pure evil and went against everything he claimed to stand for. Rest in peace to Mike and Kathy Borden, two good people who didn't deserve what happened to them in the slightest. But anyways, thank you for watching this episode of High Time Crime. If true crime is your thing, then please subscribe and hit the like button because that's all we do. I also have a second account with my brother named Horrifying where we tell stories about everything paranormal. This includes true crime, mysteries, and things that are just downright spooky. I'd greatly appreciate if you subscribed to that too. Another thing is that I've recently started an all-exclusive Patreon. Here, you're given the choice of three tiers, and the last one allows for a Patreon-only video that's uncensored. This is just in case you want to support me a little further. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, friend.